Uh, wonderful. Um, so Kirsten, Kirsten Hunter is up next, author of Irresistible APIs, uh, and she'll be talking about uh, some about Cassandra uh, databases and some new products that make Cassandra easy to use and uh, ready to start testing. Uh, I'll invite Cassandra. Uh, I'll fight, invite Kirsten to the stage now, please. Hey, Mark. Hey, good to see you good again. To see you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I'm ready to get started whenever, um, and um, I, I can just do an introduction of myself. Um, I'm Kirsten Hunter. Um, I'm a developer advocate at DataStax, and what DataStax does is we do um, uh, primarily Cassandra um, as a platform instances. Um, Cassandra is, of course, open, the open source NoSQL database that um, uh, most of the top one Fortune 100 companies use. So um, understanding Cassandra is a huge uh, tool for your tool belt as your career goes on. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the definition and objectives of not only CQL, um, and then we'll start with kind of look at uh, the Stargate APIs. Um, uh, one of the things about Cassandra that uh, I've, I've discovered since I started working at DataStax is that developers tend to be intimidated by it. it the, the, um, the configuration up front is, is, is time consuming. You have to understand a whole different way that nodes work together and how they share data. And um, it just tends to be easier to go with a different database. But Cassandra might be the right uh, database for you to use and the only way for you to find that out is, of course, to play with it. So um, uh, I'll be talking about our uh, free tier, uh, Astra database that you can get, um, which allows you to do uh, quite a lot of interactions with your data. And then we'll take a look at the APIs. Stargate is a, another open source um, project that we're heavily involved in. Um, right. And what Sarki does is it sits on top of Cassandra and it provides REST, Document, and GraphQL APIs. So you don't ever have to speak CQL if you don't want to. You can interact with your data in a way that makes more sense for you. So, um, and, and again, I say, I will say it again, these are both open source, right? Cassandra, you can install it on your own um, system or cluster of systems, and um, you can install Stargate yourself. Excellent. So, this, sounds, this sounds great. Could you want to set your presentation up? We'll get straight it into is, it. It is. It should be there, isn't it? No. I'm sharing. Oh, I guess I unshared. Did I unshare? No? Yeah. No? Yeah, you unshared. I, no. You just shared then, then you unshared again. Okay, well, let's share again. And then uh, I'll jump off the stage and let you... Okay. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's see. I think it um, got confused when... Uh... All right. That's it. Is that okay, it? So Are we good? Okay. Once, it, once so, we're in full screen mode, it's just about to come up. Yeah, it should be good. Is it good? Just, uh, not yet. It's still just saying click to exit full screen, but nothing showing. Hmm. Because it worked before. Yeah, it was working fine. Oh, here, it's slow loading. There we go. So now maybe click, try that again. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just slow loading. Hmm. That's not. Um, so maybe. In the you know what? I'm just going to present it from the browser. I'll just, okay, make, cool. um, I'll yeah. just make the browser full screen and. Um, Maybe. Okay, it's cool. fine. You I'll guys can see that stuff. It's all good. All right. Great. So I, I, I mean, they're they're big slides. So, um, okay. So um, one of the things that people frequently ask about um, about no SQL is it uh, no SQL no SQL um, is um, is it schemaless? Does it need a schema? I don't need a schema for Mongo, but I kind of do for CouchDB. And I have to index for CouchDB, but Mongo kind of lets me have abstract. Like, what are the rules? Well, the rules are there are no rules. Okay, there's there's databases that speak SQL, and then there's all the other databases. And some of them ha have uh, require schemas. Some of them don't require schemas. Um, Cassandra tends to want a schema. Um, but um, as you'll see later, um, we have a, a document API that doesn't require a schema. You just throw your JSON stuff in there and interact with it how you want. So in the basic case, um, 
Cassandra has a ring, right? Uh, and uh, it's a ring of nodes and the nodes all gossip with each other. Um, so one installation is one node and um, we can't tell you how many thousands of transactions a second you can get per core because it depends of course on how big your core is. But suffice to say that um, you could probably get um, uh, on a, on a well-configured sturdy server, uh, 10,000 per node um, queries per second. And that's why those big companies like Netflix and Apple are using Cassandra because they can maintain what they need. Also, um, because we have this serverless uh, version of it, uh, the, the um, Astra is serverless, um, it'll scale for you. It'll say, oh, look, you're bumping up against, um, you know, the, the um, limitations. And uh, I'll just throw a couple of notes in there. Cassandra um, features um, uh, virtually no downtime. And by virtually no downtime, I will, I will say that one of our large customers has been running uh, Datastax Enterprise um, on their site um, and it's a very, very busy site. Um, and it's been up for seven years with no doubt. So it's very good at recovering if something happens to one of the nodes and it makes sure that your users get the data they're looking for. Um, Mark, can you let me know if there's any questions because I can't see them. Um, okay, so one of the things that you need to figure out when you're picking a database is, what are you looking for? Well, um, what you get uh, from Cassandra is availability. Um, it, it's always on and it's distributed uh, it, it just by its very nature. Um, the um, And it's, it's also uh, very scalable, right? Because you can just add more nodes or you can add another data center and your data centers can have different rules about how many copies of each piece of data they have. So, um, the best way to, to figure this out, of course, is to is to play with it. So, oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted. Oh, we'll get there. There we go. OK, so um, Astra DB um, and, and I'll I'll uh, I'll show you uh, the interface of that shortly. Um, you just go in. Um, it it automatically puts your stuff in the um, in the region you want. It uses GCP or um, AWS or Azure, um, but it's our account, right? Uh, so so you don't have to have an AWS account to use this. Um, you get twenty five dollars a month, and uh, the messaging on the website is somewhat confusing. It says pay as you go plan, but really you get $25 and, and, um, and I'm here to tell you that that gets you 40 million reads, 5 million writes and 40 gigs of storage uh, per month. And you it'll just keep giving you that $25 every month. So um, it, it's, it's a, it's basically one click, make a, make a database instance. And then Stargate um, sits on top, like I said, of, um, of, of Cassandra. In, in this case, it's sitting on top of um, Astra. And um, what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to make it so that um, developers can interact with their data in a way that works for them, right? So use a library, hit an endpoint, um, you know, don't have to figure out what the query language wants from you. So let's take a look at what that means. Now, um, I have a Catacoda scenario, and um, I can copy this into the chat in a little bit. Um, it's free. You know, you can, I, I don't know if you've used Catacoda before, but it's it's uh, quite easy. Um, so I'm going to start the scenario. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to astra.datasax.com. You can sign up with um, with uh, Google or GitHub, so um, it's not difficult. Um, so this is your dashboard with Astra. The first time you log in, it's going to ask you to make a database, and you can make one. But you can see I have a lot of databases. Um, uh, 
you can basically make as many databases as you want. You're only charged for the um, the actual um, the actual transactions that that you do. So I am going to go back here. Well, let me let me just show you how how you would get a token. So from here, I'm going to go to organization settings. And tokens are actually at a higher level than databases. So you can get a token and it will access all of your databases. So you can see I already have a lot of tokens here. Um, so I can generate another one, but I'm just going to use one of the ones that I already have. And what this is, and it, this is going to have, um, uh, let's let's look at the roles, right? So I have, they, they moved it around. Okay, so these are the permissions that the database administrator has, and that gives me the uh, ability to do the things that I want to do. How are we doing on time? I have a little bit more. All right, cool. Oh, shoot. That's what I get for trying to clean up my screen. All right. So um, let's take a look at what we have here. Um, you can go through this later. It's very simple um, and it, it makes it easy for you to interact with the database. So um, first I'm going to install a tool. Should be pretty quick. What? No? All right. We'll do it again. Got to put it is also um, somewhat immature as technology goes. There, that, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do that. Okay. So now what it's asking me to do is is paste the connect block. We have an easier way to do this later. Um, I, I will be updating it this in the next day or so, but for now. Um, what it's asking you to do is get the connection information about the database. So the database has a few different things about it. Just give me my dashboard. Just give it to me. It'll be just a sec. All right. So let's look at um, at one of the, the the workshop that I'm going to be doing right after this one is a workshop where you can kind of create your own TikTok clone. Uh, using the Astra backend. So um, I'm going to go to connect. I'm going to grab this information here. And I'll paste it here. And then yeah, it doesn't look at that. I need to paste the whole thing. Right. Sorry about that. We have so many samples that they don't always get all updated as quickly as they should. Okay, so now it's asking me for my application token and I have downloaded it. Uh, when you create a token, it'll give you a CSV that has that information for you. And um, with that, you can create things that you need. Now, what this did was it created an Astra RC file, right? So this had, we're gonna, get, I, I did that twice, so it didn't like that. I promise I'll get this behaving tomorrow. All right. And um, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, um, use HTTP, well, HTTP, which is a tool, it's a Python tool, and it's like curl, but it's much prettier and nicer about JSON. All right, how are we doing on time? Uh, I have five more minutes, okay. Um, so um, let's move on because I wanna show you kind of each thing you can do. So. The, the first one we're going to look at, look at is the REST API. So here we are, we're going to post to um, schemas, keep spaces, workshop tables to create a table. And this is what it looks like. So 
Let's do that. Oh, great. Oh, oh, right. I know what the problem is. I, I skipped a, a step at the back. Now let's go back. Yes, stand up. And um, what I just did was I, I created a um, configuration file. Uh, that tells it um, what kind of authentication I want to use for HTTP. So now this should work fine. Ah, we don't have a key space. What do we need to do for that? Um, let's go back to... We should, should, should have just create... Ah, I know what happened. Um, I think it's TikTok. Okay, so um, that was just some Unix weirdness that I did. Um, so we've created a table that's named Caveman. So now we're going to go ahead and put some Caveman in there. So we stuck. Oh, right. That's not workshop. Yes. Right, so we got Barney in there. And we can do the same for Fred. We'll let it fail first and then. We'll do this again. All right, so now we actually have stuff in there, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what's in our table now. Still not with the workshop. workshop. And that's what our table looks like. So, you know, we have, if you look again at how we created the table, uh, we have a partition key. And that is, um, that, that's the first part of our primary key, right? That's actually going to tell us where to store things. And clustering key figures out how to order things that are within a, a par partition. So those are the things that are indexed. If you want to search on them, you can create secondary indexes. That works fine as well. But um, we created this, it had first name, last name, and occupation. So um, we're going to go ahead and give Fred a job, which will not work because workshop isn't found. Um, but but uh, Barney's not doing a lot. So let's, uh, let's kick him out. And so again, you see, this is just HTTP, right? We're doing put, we're doing get, we're doing delete. Um, it's it's all just standard. So um, I'm getting close to uh, my time. Uh, so let me just uh, encourage you. Um, I will put this link in there. You can play with it. I uh, encourage you to play with it uh, after this evening um, uh, so that I can get a chance to update it. It won't take very long. Um, and, and play around with our API, see what that is. Like all the things that I needed to do, I did, right? I, I, I logged into Astra, I uh, got a token, I, I pasted it in there, and then I can just play with it. But I do want to talk a little bit about what I'm gonna be doing in the workshop. Um, so in the workshop, we are going to build a TikTok clone. And it's gonna have Cassandra on the back. Um, we're going to deploy it locally and we're going to deploy it um, uh, on the cloud. And if you get 
lost or um, have trouble following or something doesn't work, um, we do have a Discord chat to try and uh, the instructions will be there um, on into eternity. So you'll be able to um, do it at your at your own pace and get everything working. So you can see um, how you can actually create an application that speaks to Cassandra on the back end. So, um, so I'm gonna leave it at that to give a few minutes for questions. Thanks, Kirsten. I really love how, um, I love the idea that you're gonna do a TikTok clone uh, workshop after this. I'm sure there'll be interest in that, but that was a really thorough walkthrough and demonstration of both the capabilities uh as well as the uh, just how easy it is to just onboard at the moment we don't have any questions in the chat but um i'm um, just uh let's have we've got time for for one or two if um anyone in the audience wants to uh clarify anything um that we've that you've just been presenting well the other um, thing um that i'd love to do is just just to let everyone know that um uh, my team, uh, the developer relations team, is super excited about helping people do things like this TikTok um, clone and, and other workshops. We do like three workshops uh, a week, um, live on YouTube, and there's homework. You can get badges to put on your LinkedIn. Um, and we also have Data Stacks Academy where you can get a certificate saying you know uh, Cassandra uh, so that when you go talk to one of those, uh, top 100 um, fortune companies and say, hey, I know Cassandra, see here, these people say, I, I know. So, um, so it's all good. Yeah, excellent. That's fantastic. I'll let you go and prepare for your workshop in the um, other session. Great to, uh, to uh, get in contact with you again and uh, hear what you're up to. Okay, fantastic great. Work. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.